well in this topic we will discuss about radio and television and their basic principles of working in a radio and television electromagnetic waves act as message carriers as you know induction coil produces electromagnetic waves of different frequencies electromagnetic waves in the range of radio frequency are utilized to send messages through space over long distance the radio and television sets that you operate at home receive these messages which include sound and light signals in the year 1895 marconi observed the fact that if one of the terminals of an induction coil is connected to earth and the other terminal is connected to a long wire aerial and hung high in the air the radio waves from the induction coil can be detected over long distances thus radio waves can travel through space over long distances and can be used as message carriers <laughs> There are three main stages in the radio and TV communication. These are production of messages, their transmission and their detection in a receiver. Messages are converted into electrical signals. These signals are fixed to electromagnetic waves of suitable high radio frequency called radio frequency carriers. They carry the messages. in case of radio communication the frequency range is 300 kilohertz to 30 megahertz for television the frequency range of carrier waves is approximately from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz modulation and detection the process of fixing the messages to radio frequency carrier waves is called modulation there are two methods of modulation amplitude modulation or am and frequency modulation or fm both these methods are used in radio and television the modulated waves carry messages and transmit into the space with the help of powerful transmitters at the receiver the messages are separated from these modulated waves the process of extracting information from the modulated radio frequency carrier waves is called demodulation the basic principles can be summarized as sound or images produced in a studio are converted into electrical signals these signals are then amplified the electrical signals are superimposed on suitable radio frequency carrier waves generated in a transmitter the resulting modulated waves are now ready for transmission these modulated waves are fed to an antenna fixed on a tower the antenna is called the transmitting antenna spreads the electromagnetic waves in all directions into the space this is called broadcasting these modulated radio frequency electromagnetic waves from different transmitters of different stations travel over long distances when they strike an aerial of a radio or an antenna of a tv called receiving antenna alternating currents are set up in the aerial or antenna in turn these current signals are sent to the receiver that is the radio or tv in the radio or tv a tuning circuit selects the desired modulated waves out of a large number of waves sent by different broadcasting stations the selected frequency modulated wave is now fed to a detector circuit the detector circuit consists of a local oscillator which separates sound or image or both from radio frequency carrier wave 
This process is called demodulation. The separated signal is sent to an amplifier which enables you to hear the sound or see the image. As you have seen the various stages of radio broadcasting utilizing the basic principles of radio communication in the previous slide, let us discuss these one by one. Production of sound and modulated wave. In a studio, the song rendered by a person is converted to electrical signals using a microphone as shown in the slide. These signals are in the audio frequency range. An oscillator circuit produces suitable RF carrier waves. Radio transmitter. The audio frequency AF signal and RF waves are combined in the modulator transmitter. The modulated waves are fed to an antenna fixed on a tower. The transmitting antenna broadcasts the modulated RF waves into space. Radio receiver. The aerial receives the modulated waves from different transmitting stations. The tuning circuit selects only the desired signal. The detector circuit demodulate the AF signal which is fed to an amplifier. The amplified electrical signals are fed to a speaker and converted into music or speech. As we know, television is the art of transmission and reproduction of pictures, scenes and moving figures along with the associated sounds. You also should remember that there is a difference between radio and TV broadcasting. In case of radio broadcasting, only sound signals are involved. But in case of TV broadcasting, both audio and video signals are simultaneously transmitted and received. The basic principle involved in the telecasting and reception by TV through various stages is shown in the slide. The two basic steps involved in the telecasting and reception by TV are A. Production of audio and video signals or modulation and B. TV transmitter. Production of audio and video signals or modulation. One important stage in production of video signals corresponding to an object is scanning. Before the advancement of science in older days, a mechanical system called NIPCOR disk was used for scanning. However, nowadays an improvised system called Iconoscope is used for scanning purpose. Iconoscope is a type of camera consisting of a cathode ray beam and a photoelectric cell. The iconoscope is focused onto an object to be televised. Scanning by a TV camera is a process of dividing an image on the screen into a large number of very small squares formed by a set of horizontal and vertical straight lines. The degree of variation in the light intensity on different portions of the image is detected by photocells. These photocells convert light signals to electrical signals and are amplified and used for modulation. The amplified video signals are amplitude modulated using a suitable radio frequency carrier wave in a transmitter called AM picture transmitter. Similarly, the amplified audio signals are frequency modulated using another radio frequency carrier wave of a higher frequency in a transmitter called FM sound transmitter. The video and audio modulated carrier waves together are fed into the transmitting antenna on a tower. The transmitting antenna broadcasts the combined signals radiating it into space. So, in this way, television broadcasting is done. Let's quickly recap what we have learnt so far today. We started with insulators, conductors and semiconductors. 
learnt about different types of semiconductors. We also looked at whole current. Something else we looked at was junction diodes. We looked at principles behind radio and TV communication. Well, I hope you've been able to understand all these concepts and can relate to them when you see your electronic devices. That's it from me for today. Bye.